So a few days ago on Twitter, I posted a graphic regarding the Mets' current 40-man roster and how I felt about everyone. Now, with Twitter being Twitter, of course, or X or whatever you want to call it, there was some backlash on how I kind of named some of these players. So I thought that I would explain my reasoning in this post for the final segment of today's podcast. Now, obviously, the offseason is far from over, and the Mets have quite a few moves that they are going to make. There's some guys that could be off of this roster. This is just a quick rundown of how I feel about the current 40-man roster, and I split these up into four different tiers. So it's as self-explanatory as it can be. As for the four tiers, I started it off with the franchise, franchise pieces, high impact pieces. They're either going to be here for a long time or should be here for a long time. And, you know, our most irreplaceable pieces on this roster. I also did another tier called positive slash promising pieces. I think that they're a positive asset to this roster. Then I have another tier that says you exist, I guess, which is kind of like this mix of neutral to you're replaceable to you're kind of there you're taking up a roster spot you could do what you do we know what type of player you are and that's about it and then the final tier is strictly get off my team guys who i just don't want here anymore i don't see any use for them i think we're going to see all five of the guys that i put in that tier on the Mets roster, but in my opinion, I just need to see the Mets move on from these pieces, or I'm just not a fan of the player, and I think that they are a negative asset to this roster. We'll start off with the franchise. We'll start with the positivity, get down to the negativity. Edwin Diaz, your main closer, he signed here for another four years, another option, obviously coming off of an injury, but we all know how good he is. He is going to be their closer no matter what. Sanga I have here as, as a franchise piece, great rookie year, Cy Young caliber year, rookie of the year caliber year. He was fantastic. He's the ace, the ghost fork. It should be here for years to come. I put Alvarez in this tier as well. He's the future catcher. He has, he is the only prospect we brought up here recently who has taken the job by the balls and ran with it. Alonzo I have here. It's pretty self-explanatory. 40 home runs every season, guaranteed. The lineup is nothing without him. It goes where Pete Alonso goes. Francisco Lindor, going to be here for years and years to come. That's your franchise shortstop. And then, of course, Brandon Nimmo, who's locked down as well for the next seven years. He is our leadoff hitter, and he will be for years and years to come. Then you get to the positive piece, our promising piece. I started this off with DJ Stewart because I like DJ Stewart. I think that he's a solid bat. I think the Mets really tapped into something here. They have tons of years of control on him. I have Alex Ramirez here as well, because he's a part of the 40-man roster. They protected him from Rule 5. I'm very high on, on Alex Ramirez. I know that his last year in the minors was not good, but it looks like Stearns also believes in him too, adding him to the 40-man roster, um, protecting him from Rule 5. You know, if all goes well, he is a boomer bust prospect, but I do have some high hopes for him, and I really hope that he does break out this season. He does have a lot to prove, but I think he's a really promising piece to this 40-man roster. We won't see him for a while, but Again, Ronnie Mauricio, going to be injured, but I do have him on here. I he probably does have the best raw power out of all four of the prospects that we've seen up here in the major leagues. Um, it's a little too early to tell. He was only here for a month, and we're not going to see him for a while. Mark Vientos I also have on here because I think that, yes, he may be limited. He might be just a DH at best, DH first baseman in the future, but the pitch selection has to get better, but we all know that the raw power, if he were to tap into it, if he were at his best, he could provide that type of J.D. Martinez production that he's been able to do for his entire career, 30 to 35 home runs every single year. Obviously, we're going to have to see it to believe it, but we'll see if he's able to do it going forward. I have Luis Severino on here, and that is because I think it's a low risk, high reward. Again, I've talked about this before. Um, it's a one year deal. He has had great stuff to be a number two in a rotation before, but he's just had a lot of injuries and, you know, hopefully the Mets have, can find a way to utilize him. And if they do, he can be a positive asset to this roster. I have Sean Reed Foley on here. Most Mets fans are not going to agree to this because they've seen Sean Reed Foley melt down many times. And also he had Tommy John surgery last year and he will be coming back from it 
in spring training. One thing I really like about Sean Reeve Foley, the rising fastball, I think he has fantastic stuff. He has a live arm. The only problem is the control. And the Mets really need to tweak that and see what they can get. But this is someone who can definitely give you a ton of strikeouts. We saw in his rehab assignment, this guy was touching capacities that, you know, we have not seen him. He was touching 97 consistently, 98 consistently in his rehab assignment. When he comes back, I am excited. He is one of the arms to watch for spring training, but that's a little bit early to tell you. And I'll remind you a little bit later on in the off season. Brooks Raley, also solid lefty, one of the best lefty relievers in baseball. Bringing him back for like $6 million this year is a big steal, I think. Um, you know, the Mets have not really had that solid lefty in the bullpen for a while. And, you know, he is one of the best in the game. It was a good pickup by Epler. One of the few in the proud. Overall, he's a back-end piece to this bullpen. He definitely gives you a lot of value. I got Tyler McGill on here. I'm still a believer in McGill. I think that McGill can be a fantastic pitcher. He's just got to find that consistency. They have to kind of fix the identity crisis with him if they want to see him in the bullpen you know, what pitch mix they're going to give him. I just don't like how Hefner has kind of treated this whole situation with McGill. And just hopefully he's just not a different pitcher every single time. He needs to gain that consistency. But I still do believe in a guy like Tyler McGill, kind of a diamond in the rough, former eighth round pick. He was originally a reliever. We just need to find that kind of identity. McGill looks like he added a splitter this offseason. So, you know, we'll see how that fizzles out and everything. Jorge Lopez. I think it was a plus ad. I think this is high risk, high reward. Yes, he only had one good year in 2022, but he does have good stuff. He's got that hard sinker. He's got good contact management stuff. He can get you some strikeouts. At best, he probably could be your eighth inning guy if all goes well. It's taking a bet on a guy. It's $2 million, you know, for a reliever. That's, you know, nothing at this point. Arbitration two type of money for a solid reliever. Jose Quintana, solid asset last year. I think that he... If the Mets are not competitive, he is one of the top guys to get moved. If he didn't have pinpoint command, he probably would not be that good of a pitcher in the major leagues, but he just has pinpoint command. He knows how to locate. He knows how to manage contact, and that's something that makes him very valuable. He can give you innings. Um, hopefully, he's a little bit more healthier next year. And then I also have Grant Hartwig on this tier as well. I think that he can be a really solid reliever. Heart sinker, great cutter. He's just got to work on that control. The control has been a huge problem for him. We've seen him hit a lot of batters. We've seen him walk a lot of batters. But again, these are fixable tools that you can have for a reliever in high leverage types of situations. This guy can throw hard. He's young. He's 26 years old. And I think that he can be a really solid piece to this bullpen for years to come, um, if all things go well, of course. Then we get to a you exist, I guess. I'm not going to go completely specific with all of these guys. Omar Narvaez, backup catcher, of course, maybe getting paid a little bit too much. It's whatever. He's going to be backing up Alvarez. Alvarez is your franchise catcher. Narvaez, your catcher too. Taylor Heineman, I don't really know much about this guy, um, but I know he's like 32 years old. The Mets picked him up uh, off waivers, uh, as well as Cooper Hummel as well. They're just like like kind of here. I don't know what this means for Tomas Nito for these guys, but uh, Tomas Nito, of course, was DFA'd, but he's still with the Mets. I have Tyrone Taylor on here, mainly because he's a fourth outfielder. I don't think he's going to be getting many starts. If he was going to be our starting outfielder, maybe if he was good enough, I'd probably put him in like that pro that positive, promising piece. But, you know, he's here. He's a good, he's a solid player. I'd say nothing too crazy. I have Luis Sanahel Acuna in here. I, I just, I've said this before. I'm not really big on him. I think that he has a lot of tools that can probably help you win games, but overall, I just don't think that he's going to translate to the major leagues the way that people think he's going to be heard the exception of how Mets fans, if he's even half of what his brother was, I just don't see it. I don't see the bat speed. I see an inconsistent lower half. I don't think the defense is as good. I think he's a good athlete. I think he has tools that can help you, but I just don't think he's worth that top prospect label of someone who is a future star in the making of this organization. Jose Budo, innings eater. That's the type of stuff that he's got. I don't see him as a future piece to the rotation, but he's there. Josh Walker, a reliever now. He was a starter. Does have a lot of injury issues. I was a little bit higher on him like two years ago, but he got hurt. Lots of things have happened recently. He could be a solid lefty in the future, but nothing crazy. As for Joey Lucchese, too, I mean, this is a, I like him as a depth piece. I know that he was good for us in the small sample size that he gave, but I just don't see him as like a big you know, future piece on this team. 
And then there's Zach Short, Michael Tonkin, you know, Johan Ramirez, who they just got from the White Sox. You know, these are pieces that are just like there. I have David Peterson there. I get, you know, that probably there's a lot of Mets fans who like Peterson better than McGill. Um, both of them are kind of at that current state where they're both 28 years old. The thing about Peterson is that he was a first round pick. There was expectation there and he has not shown that he was really struggling. He was better when he came back from the minors. But I just, you know, I think that he's he's David Peterson. Like, that's pretty much it. Adrian Hauser, I have him there again. Solid arm, nothing special, but he can give you innings. Reed Garrett, whatever. Hard throwing arm at his best. I have Austin Adam is in this tier. Uh, hard slider, lots of control issues. This is a boom. It's a boomer bust type of thing. Uh, you know, one year deal. He's on a major league contract, nothing special. And then Phil Bickford, I don't even know why he's still here. I don't like the command of this guy. He's had a lot of frustrating go at it when he was with the Dodgers. When he came here, you know, nothing really that special. You know, he's here. He's an arm that's on the 40 man roster. And then we get to get off my team pieces that I just, I can't stand. And I need the Mets to either get rid of, or I just, I've lost my patience with them. Starling Marte is on here. And that's the main reason is because I'm just scared of this contract. I don't think that Starling Marte can be a starting caliber player going forward. He's 35 years old. There's still two years left on that contract. And uh, I want to see the Mets try and move him. Drew Smith, I'm I'm done talking about this guy. One of the worst relievers in all of baseball. Terrible command, terrible secondary stuff, constant high leverage blowups. I just don't even know what he's doing here. He should have been non-tendered. I have McNeil there because I just want McNeil gone. I've had I've had enough of McNeil. I've had enough of his play style. I just don't think he contributes to a contending team. But I'm not a fan of McNeil. We already know this by now. Brett Beatty, um, I see nothing. I'm sorry. I just don't see anything moving forward. The only way that I think that he can be a solid major league player is if he changes pretty much everything about him. And I don't think that's going to happen because most of the habits that he's had, he's had since high school. I just don't think that he's that good of a major league player. There just really is not much redeeming qualities from him. Joey Wendell, just don't like his play type. Like that's really it. Um, I got nothing against the guy. I get it. He's an upgrade from Giorme. Most players with a heartbeat are an upgrade from Guillaume. I get Mets fans don't want to accept that, but it's true. You can't hate a one-year deal. It's impossible, but I just don't like the play style of the player. And that's the reason why I got Wendell in the get off my team. But, you know, I could also put him in you exist, I guess. But I guess I just wanted to even out the tier because I already had 16 guys in you exist, I guess. So I just had to bump him down a tier. You know, he's going to be a bench piece. Think that Wendell pushes the prospects just in the same level as Giorme would do. Wendell is the one addition so far this offseason that I just did not understand. I didn't see as an upgrade. Of course, there's my rundown of the current roster. Obviously, there's going to be changes. There's 38 guys on the roster. They still have two open spots. You could have some casualties. Maybe you see, you know, Heineman go out or, you know, Ramirez goes out or Reed Garrett goes or Bickford or something like that. Maybe that's something that happens. I don't know. We'll see. Again, there's still tons in store for us this offseason, but I just wanted to explain it because it got a lot of hate, relatively a lot of Beatty and McNeil. You know, there, there, you know, there's some people, you know, that like Acuna a little bit more than me. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but that's just how I feel about the current Mets roster.